The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown for Halloween, October 31st, 2018. My name is Neil Rochlani. I'm here with a very special guest, Chef Ali. Um, what, what do I call you again? Do I call you Chef or Ali or something else? Chef or Ali, but not both. <laughs> not both? <laughs> uh, no one ever calls me Chef Ali. Is it Chef or <laughs> Ali? All right. I'm trying to think which one's better. Um, Whichever one you prefer. All right. You don't um, have a preference? No. All right. I, I think I might just I might just like mix it up. Cool. Sometimes say chef. Sometimes but I don't know how special a guest I am, Neil, but thanks for having oh, me. Oh man, you know what? I this is so it's been Adrian and I, it's been Eric Ong and I, and then as soon as Adrian couldn't come on, um, I was like, I want to get Chef on here because um first of all, I've never actually talked to you before. I just admire your work from afar. Um Thanks, man. Yeah, and I, you helped me out with my draft. You know, as soon as um, I did that draft, and I texted you. And you told me you told me that I might have to pump blocks. I traded for uh, Whiteside right away. Um, Very nice. I gave up Doncic though, so uh. Uh, probably you're you're getting the better value. But Doncic is a very exciting. To I watch. know. Well, that's so the thing. That, that sucks. <laughs> he was the buzzy guy, so he people wanted him. I'm like, you know, Whiteside's much safer, right? In terms of like what I can expect. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got him. But anyway, so thanks for your. Now I'm leading blocks, by the way. I picked up right McGee as well. So is this in a roto league? <laughs> it is a roto league. So sweet, sweet. Uh, how are you doing in your leagues? Um, actually, I'm hit by the injury bugs in pretty much all my leagues right now. Oh so, wait, who's uh, who's injured? I have Barton on and Dunn on almost all my H two H squad. Oh god, I'm sorry about that. And then I have a uh, Devin Booker in the home league. I got Harden in another league, and I have John Collins in another league. <laughs> so can you uh, can you hold it out? Or do you have to like pick up guys and drop them? Mm, I'm, tr I'm, you know, I'm streaming my ass off in pretty much every league I can. For the two IL slots, I'm kind of hanging in there. But like for the one IL slots, it's getting a little bit of rough. But hopefully, you know, Harden or Brooklyn should be back soon. Collins also. Right. Right. Um, do you do DFS and all? I was just talking to Mike uh, Apatria, who's a big DFS guy here at Hoop Ball. Um, do you do that? I'm still trying Only to learn. Rarely. What's that? Only rarely. I've checked out his articles. He has good stuff, but to me, it's just so random, man. I know. I'm like, you know, to... over the set of the course of a season, how are you doing? Not well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I put in $25 in the, in the, to, to uh, FanDuel, and mm -hmm. every night they have this contest where if you get a certain score, it's a $3 contest. So I'm just trying okay. to test out different lineups and see how I do. So I've, so far... If you get more than like a the certain score, I'm doing the very bottom one, so it's 260 points. Um, may not mean anything that anyone doesn't play DFS. Anyway, it's not that high of a threshold. I I've I think I've gotten there twice out of seven times. So that's not bad. No. So you're not competing against other players. You're just competing against uh, some kind of arbitrary baseline. Yes, but the, the way it works is there's like 3,000 people in it. So depending ah. on depending on how many people clear it, then you get a percentage of the payout, right? So like. One night, everyone, almost everyone cleared it. So it was, you got back three dollars and five cents. <laughs> so you okay. basically won a nickel. Um, <laughs> other nights, will, will like it's somewhere usually between five and seven dollars. So usually it's like somewhere between like forty to sixty percent clear it. So that's a pretty good ROI. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have it, you ever tried Draft.com? I have not heard of that site. What does that do? Instead of choosing your players before the game, you actually go on a little mini draft with your opponents before the game. Oh, interesting. So Wait, you, you, done... you do an actual draft? Yeah, but it's usually with short rosters, like a five-man five, five -man roster. Got it. So it takes like just a few minutes? Yeah. Okay. Did, did you, is that what you dabble in, or is there other things you do? Um, I do. I've tried both formats. I think I'm a little more successful in the draft format, but overall I'm not putting big money in just because... The game is so hard. Yeah. Like, you know, you never know who will play well, who will, you know, get hurt, who will be a last minute scratch. I know. You have to, what I was talking to Mike about, you have to really be on it. He says, if you don't, you have to, like, be able to change your lineup to the last minute because you have to know all the injury issues. Otherwise, as he said, it's not worth it or it's really hard to win. Um, anyway, mm -hmm. let's get back to uh, reality basketball, at least for a second here. Um, is there any game you want to start with? Whatever's good for you. All right, start with you want to start with that Bulls game? I was going to yeah. start with our hometown Bulls. <laughs> Wendell Carter Jr. I don't know if you saw stat lines yet, but um, yeah, I'll let I'll do Denver. I'll let you take Chicago. Um, 
So let's start off with uh, my guy, everyone's guy, Nikola Jokic. 33 minutes, 22 points, 12 rebounds, 9 assists, uh, 3 of 6 from 3-point land. So 3 three-pointers, 2 steals and a block. This is why I love having him on my team. Um, Jamal Murray played 44 minutes, got 12 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists. Um, did not hit a three, got a block, um, two for two from the line. Gary Harris, another standout, 16 points, five rebounds, two assists, two three-pointers, a steal. And then Millsap, he's one person I'm going to ask you about in a little bit here. Uh, 19 points, six rebounds, one assist. Shot well, eight of 13, one three-pointer, three blocks. And then Torrey Craig, someone who is starting and replaces Barton but not really playing starters minutes, 22 minutes, seven points, four rebounds. Isn't there does not seem to be a clear cut um, guy for Barton, unfortunately. Monte Morris played twenty five minutes. Trey Lyles twenty minutes. Plumley twenty minutes. Oh, Malik, maybe it's Malik Beasley, uh, thirty one minutes, but not really putting up any fantasy numbers. Six points, five rebounds, one steal, no blocks. Let me ask you this, Chef: Would you um did you target Millsap at all this year? I did not, and I don't have him on any of my teams currently. Yeah, and he's not someone you're looking at anymore, right? You're not even trying to get him. After a night like this, no, I mean, just uh, I would be a, he would be a sell high guy for me. Yeah. I don't know how high you're going to sell, but just <laughs> all the all the old guys, you know, I'm trying to a little bit worry about. I know, and uh, even last year when he came back after the, his injury, he was not very good. Um, no. So, is there anything? So, what I take away from this is, I mean, maybe sell high on Millsap if you can, but I think that's a hard sell. Um, mm-hmm. Are you picking up Beasley or Monty Morris in any deeper leagues? I picked up Morrison one, and I was a little bit disappointed because um, Coach loves him, and he's getting his minutes. But him and Beasley and even Lyles just, you know, aren't aren't performing. Lyles is probably performing the best, but you know, against the Bulls, it's kind of a toss up. Yeah, I know. He's this, not, this is the weakest defense maybe in the NBA. So yeah. Or Atlanta, if you saw the game last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the weakest defenses. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know, Lyles. See, the thing is, last year when he was when he was getting so many minutes, it was you know he was pretty much a replacement for Millsap. But it, it doesn't look like he's getting too many minutes at the small forward. Mm-hmm. So yeah, in uh, I'm not really, I guess, big on any of them. But in uh, you could give it a shot in deeper leagues. Yeah, I mean, the way I see this, it's Jokic Tier 1, Murray and Harris are kind of like Tier 2, and then Mosap Tier 3, and no one else I really want. Um, That's my, yeah. Yeah. Anything else from tonight's stat line on Denver side that jumps out to you that makes you think about anything? No, not really. Everything looks pretty good from from the key guys. Yeah, pretty much what we expected, right? Um, all right, you want to take us to Chicago side? So the Bulls lost by one point tonight. Jabari Parker started, played 36 minutes, but had just had six points on three of 10 shooting and nine boards. Of course, as you mentioned, the rookie Wendell Carter Jr. had 25 points, eight boards, five assists, three steals, and three blocks, and two threes. So he really put up some numbers against Jokic tonight, and he's been playing better um, lately. Uh, Holiday also had a good night shooting. Five for ten, all five threes. He also added five assists and a block to go with his 15 points. Zach Levine, of course, still playing well. 28 points, two threes, seven assists, five boards, one steal, and one block. Only two turnovers. Campaign is, you know, pretty garbage like we already knew. So he just had five (laughs) points, two assists, and five turnovers. And his backup, Archie uh, Diacono, Mm -hmm. had, what is that, three points, one three. Seven assists, three steals, which is marginally better. But he's more of a deeper league guy. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, off the bench, yeah, Hutchinson looked better than as a starter. But again, it's a high-paced game against the Nuggets. Uh, Blakeney, they let him chuck for 14 minutes off the bench. He hit for four threes, which is unusual, and ended up with 15 points. Um, I was really hoping Carter Jr. would have been dropped in some of my leagues. You know, with the oh, rough man, start. Me too. I, I me wanted too. to really just snatch him right up because I knew this was coming. Um, gosh darn. Anyway, um, you wouldn't sell. High, would you sell high on him, or would you just keep keep riding him if you owned him? Personally, I would keep him unless you can sell really high. But outside of you know Chicago based leagues, you probably can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, are you streaming Holiday at all? He's one guy I thought about streaming, but I haven't done it. Uh, do you own him anywhere? Yeah, I, I picked him up in three leagues. Okay. How how's is he working out? 
I just picked him up last week, but he's doing the job. <laughs> yeah. Getting threes and steals, which is pretty much what I want from him. Okay. Yeah. He's been uh what's is he averaging? I was looking up the stats here. I think he's averaging the couple a game. How many is he getting? He was averaging over two threes and like a steal and a half last yeah, time. I checked, yeah, yeah, he's doing that really was well last week. Those two. Yeah. Those are two categories I tend to need to stream. So I should maybe look into picking them up. Um and then I was gonna ask you, um, yeah, nothing really else here that's new to me. I mean, I didn't want Cameron Payne at all once he got the starting role. Um, nope. Yeah, and then there's no point guard I really want. It's really just Levine and Carter Jr. and Parker, I guess, at this point. And then, like you said, streaming streaming Holiday. I don't think he's going to last, right? You think once um, they get healthy, do you think Holiday is going to have value? Or do you think it's just like a two, three-week thing? I think he'll. St- I think his value will be reduced, but I think he'll still probably carry some value. Because like he's been playing regularly, the largest minutes of all the starters. Uh-huh. Uh, Hoiberg is keeping him in with the bench because he trusts him to you know not lose his assignment defensively, and also Hoiberg has been running him out there as a small ball power forward, so he's getting his minutes. So I, I think his usage will come down, but I think he'll still be good for two or for threes and steals. Hopefully, crossing my fingers. Yeah. What about so what 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 uh, size league is that? Is that 12, 14? or where do you think the cutoff will be? These are, yeah, standard leagues I'm talking about. Yeah, so you think he still could be relevant for standard leagues? Okay. But if he's not, you know, he, you know, I'm a, I'm a streamer extraordinaire, so he'll get the X too. Yeah, no exactly. Problem. Yeah, I guess you can see how it works out and then go from there. Um, how you like him, Parker? So, sorry, no. Oh, go ahead. How am I getting Parker? Yeah, how you like him, Parker, this year? <sighs> I played him in DFS tonight. I'm a very, I'm a very like, <laughs> I'm a very like, a uh, very basic DFS. I'm like, oh, Parker's starting. I'll play him. Uh-huh. And, and it doesn't work out that way. It's not that easy, Chef. I'm learning that. Uh, <laughs> Six points, not. nine rebounds. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, I played. I also played Derrick Rose, so that worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, I saw him in, in our home league. I'm like, how the hell did Neil pass me up on points just off the couple guys he has playing? Then I saw the box score. I'm like, oh wow, the Rose dropped fifty. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's- Crazy. Ridiculous! <laughs> I'm gonna stay off Twitter for the night because I know the roll stands are just gonna be you know nuts. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, I was thinking we'd go there next because that's sort of like Chicago North, uh, Minnesota, uh, and Utah. Yeah. Let's take it there. Uh, yeah. So Utah, uh, so surprised by this result. This is where the NBA gets so hard to predict. Utah, go, I thought they were gonna win tonight without Butler up there, but I guess maybe the team, the Rose just went crazy. So 128, 125. Minnesota wins. I'll start with the road team, Utah. Ingles, someone I own in a couple leagues, really like him. But let's start with um, their main guy, uh, Donovan Mitchell, 26 points, one rebound, five assists, three or three from the line, three three-pointers, a steal and a block. Uh, Gobert, another monster line, 22 points, 13 rebounds, three assists, nine of 12. Did kill you, though, in the free throw line, four of nine. A steal on three blocks. Mm-hmm. Derek Favor, someone I own in a league, and he's just kind of on the margins. Uh, 23 minutes tonight, 14 points, 8 rebounds, um, no defensive stats. Did have a 3. And then the aforementioned Joe Ingles, 13 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, just 1 of 6 from 3-point land. Uh, missed both his free throws, which is unusual for him, and a steal. And then Rubio, who's kind of been, uh, he's had a couple really great games, but otherwise has had some duds, and tonight was one of those 5 points, Two rebounds, five assists. Just took six, six shots. Excuse me. Did have two steals and a block though, so a little bit of salvage there. And then Crowder is Crowder. I don't think he's really owned worth being owned in twelve team leagues yet, but he is putting up decent stats. Eighteen points, seven rebounds. Um, tonight hit five three pointers and a steal. And then the guy who I'm kind of most excited about on this bench um, is Dante Exum in terms of just Exum. watching him play. Um, but I'm, I was kind of hoping he might take over for Rubio at some point. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but tonight he played 25 minutes, had 14 points, four rebounds, three assists, um, a steal, and a three-pointer. Yeah, I'm just watching Exum. I'm watching Crowder. Um, this Really nothing else to take away from this, but uh, Favors, who I picked up late in a draft, has been really disappointing. Um, any thoughts from you, Chef, on this, uh, on this stat side? Uh, just real quickly, I think Mitchell also sat out the last couple of minutes with a hamstring issue. Oh, thank you for so, bringing that up. Yeah, is, does it look serious? You might want to throw Exum out there in DFS. Uh, I don't know. He just said it was just the last four minutes. He said it was a tweak. Okay. He's officially questionable for the next game. Oh, good. Uh, it's good to know. I, I did not see that. Um, yeah, I think for if Exum could get in there, he he definitely is. He's a fun player to watch. Um, anything else from this uh, from the Utah side? 
No, I think you're right about Crowder, at least in Roto. He's more of a better fit for a deeper format. Okay. I think he could be an end-of-the-bench guy if he's, you know, playing well, depending on your build in H2H. Uh-huh. But, again, that's team-specific. I wouldn't recommend, like, a must-add for standard formats. Okay. And then Rubio, did did you target him at all this year? I was a little yeah. off on him. What do you think of him coming in? Yeah, I was totally down on Rubio. I mean, Donovan Mitchell just soaks the ball as all the usage. He's the lead ball handler and – you know, Rubio, while I'm still not the best off the ball shooter or or really anything without the ball. So, right. yeah, I was down on Rubio. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think Favors is going to bounce back or do you think this is kind of more where he's going to be? Or do you have any thoughts on him? So, like for tonight's line, the 14 points, eight rebounds. Yeah. Does that, are you kind of disappointed in that? No, that's what I, I mean, I want him to, to block some shots, though, right? <laughs> so, I guess that's. Uh, he, he was blocking quick. shots until he uh, left last week with whatever his knee injury. Yeah, I know. I guess a 14 and 8 is fine. I just I just like to see him get a block or two. That's all. That's that's kind of what I expect from. Him. I mean I mean right. I mean you, you got this guy for blocks uh, along with reasons. Yeah. So anyway, I'm never satisfied, just, Chef. Okay, do you want to take us through Minnesota <laughs> through Minnesota's sure. line? So of course the big number for Minnesota was Derrick Rose, former MVP with the big five zero. He had four threes and overall nineteen of thirty one from the field, eight for eleven from the free throw line. He added six assists, four boards, two steals, and a block. Also had six turnovers, but nobody's complaining. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns also had a good game, 28 points, 16 boards, four threes, two steals, two blocks, four assists. Pretty decent efficiency. Not the best, but uh, nothing, uh, nothing to scoff at. Yeah. Wiggins returned from his brief absence, played pretty well. 19 points from eight for 17 shooting, three threes, six boards, and two steals in a block, which helps a lot. Taj Gibson put up his usual kind of middling low end numbers of 10 points, one steal, only two boards. Yeah. And the rookie, Josh Akogi, or Akogi, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, also has been playing well, uh, especially when Butler sits and had 10 points on four or five shooting, four boards, two steals, two blocks, and an assist. Not much off the bench, really notable. All right, so um, as a Jeff Teague owner, should I be nervous about Derrick Rose taking over the starting point guard job? Oh, man, who knows with Tibbs. I right? think it's, <laughs> it's a possible maybe Rose moves to the two if Butler's moved, but, man, it seems like even from last year, like maybe Teague and, and Thibodeau have some, some kind of beef or some kind of friction. So, yeah, yeah I have them in one league, and yeah, that's pretty disappointing. But, you know, it's not like you can sell them high or you don't want to sell them low. So I think at least for the next couple of weeks, you just got to kind of stick it out and see, you know, see how it's trending. Yeah, exactly. He's out now with injury. Uh, I don't think it's a serious, though. So she should come back soon. Yeah, interesting to see how this plays out with Rose. Um, are you at all targeting a coach? I don't know how to pronounce the name either. A Koji in any of your leagues? Not in standard leagues right now, but I am keeping a closer eye on him. Yeah. Although what troubles me is that like he only got five field goal attempts, so you know if he doesn't hit four of them, he'd still be good for some you know like low end defensive stats. But I don't know how much of an all around impact he'll have. Yeah, Derek Rose took thirty one shots. Yeah, is that, is, that, is that a record for the season so far? I mean, has anyone else taken thirty one shots this year? Well, Towns only takes like you know three shots a game <laughs> until the last couple of games, so <laughs> it seems like it, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, this is just amazing. So, are you are you at all picking up Derrick Rose in any leagues? I'm I'm um, not. For the record, I'm not only because, like again, the threes are kind of fluky, as are the defensive stats, and I'm kind of looking more to stream like threes and steals, yeah, maybe blocks. But if you just need like in a points format, definitely pick them up. If you're okay with just kind of some scoring and some popcorn numbers, assists and boards, that's fine too. But I don't really need that right now. Although I do believe on the season he's currently at 105, so he's you know in the borderline for you know standard league value. Yeah, and his field goal percent coming tonight was just 39. percent So this was yeah. this, this was totally unusual. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. He's not someone I trust because of that. Um, but who knows? And he'll get hurt at some point too. Yeah, I think that's that's probably going to happen as well. Um, as a Towns owner, I'm really happy to see this line. Um, I guess it is just Jimmy Butler in his head. Is that? You think that's really it? Like once Jimmy Butler's gone, he's going to be back to the old towns? I read some comments talking about he was, you know, kind of looked like he was pouting on the court, but I haven't seen him play that much, so I can't really, yeah, I guess, opine on that. 
But yeah, man, I'm kind of disappointed because I was, you know, I was trying to add him up for the whole first week, and then last week he kind of picked it up, and now eh, by by low window is completely shut. Yeah, it's totally shut now. Um, all right. Um, I've got no other thoughts on this. Do you have any other thoughts on Minnesota? No, I think we covered it. Okay. Let's go to the first game I think was Detroit Brooklyn overtime game. Brooklyn wins one twenty, one nineteen. Uh Blake Griffin just having a year I did not expect. Twenty five points, nine rebounds, four assists, um, four three pointers, two steals and a block, five of seven from the line, eight of eighteen from the field. Andre Drummond, he's nuts. Twenty four points, twenty three rebounds, assists, eight of ten from the line. This is so impressive. Um a steal, two blocks. Yeah. Reggie Jackson had a solid night, 21 points, four rebounds, two, just two assists, though. Shot poorly, though, 8 of 23. Two three-pointers, a steal, and a block. Um, Stanley Johnson, someone who, for a starter, doesn't really put, put up much value. Tonight he did okay, six points, 12 rebounds, two assists, three-pointers, a steal. Uh, Reggie Bullock, um, maybe you can look up some injury news on this. Um, just played nine minutes and did not put up a single stat line. Uh, off the bench, Ish Smith um, played 31 minutes, four points, three rebounds, four assists, and a steal. And that's really it. Um, well, actually, Bruce Brown Jr. played 29 minutes, but not much <laughs> to write home about in terms of fantasy value. Um, what am I taking away from this? Not much, except if Bullock got hurt, which I'm trying to look up now. Um Chef, anything from you on this? I mean, Stanley Johnson, you don't own him anywhere, right? Is that correct? No, I'm not really touching their wings this year. Yeah, I thought Bullock might might develop into a guy you could trust, but yeah, he was great at the end of last year. But I think exactly. just, I yeah. wasn't wasn't Stanley out hurt at the end of last year. I don't remember the. Yeah, you might be right. It might have been just a, a function of that. I'm not sure. And they have a uh, Glenn Robinson the third now. Yeah. So, yeah. It seemed like Coach might just ride the hot hand. Yeah, they got Glenn Robinson playing 14 minutes, so he's going to get some some minutes in there as well. Um, Ish Smith is someone I don't trust either. Didn't really do much tonight anyway. Um, yeah, this seems yeah. kind of a fantasy graveyard besides Griffin and Drummond. Um, yeah. Did you think Griffin was going to have this good of a year, or do you think he's going to keep it up? <laughs> like, well, what, what, I what, didn't at all. I'm very surprised. What's that? Just because, like, literally, he was on my do not draft at all. Even if he felt like I just wasn't drafting him. Yeah, he was too because like I was worried about his field goal. Go ahead. He gets hurt every year. I know, and his field goal percent was going down this year. I mean, was going down because he's taking more threes, and as he gets no defensive stats. Although tonight he got two steals and a block, but typically he's not a defensive stat person. I I totally stayed away from him, but he's he's going. He's playing really well. I mean, fantasy wise, I haven't really watched him play. Have you seen him play at all? I I'm honest. I haven't watched any Detroit. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't blame you for that. Actually, all those East Coast teams don't always working, man. So like, I never catch those East Coast teams. Oh yeah, that's right. You're working late anyway. You can't do it. All right, except um, on the weekends. Yeah. Um, you want to hit us up on Brooklyn? Sure. Oh, real quick, would you sell Blake Griffin? Would you yeah, entertain selling him high if you could? No, I would ride him until. Well, he's going to get injured at some point. Um, or he, the mm-hmm. likelihood he's going to get injured, I think, is greater than fifty percent at some point. So I think you do want to trade him, but I, I don't know if I trade him this soon because unless you can get like a first or second round player back, I, I think I would hold on okay. to him. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Uh, I wouldn't sell him anything less than around the top thirty value he's putting up right now. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't like try to like be too like clever about it you know because you don't know when the injury is going to happen he could could play for several months yeah and he's definitely um on a mission it seems this year kind of like butler um anyway uh let's over to brooklyn looks like okay yeah go ahead take us there so on the net side we have joe harris with a little bounce back game eight of 14 shooting including four threes five boards one assist no defensive stats, one turnovers, and had 23 points. Jared Allen uh, is continuing to disappoint a little bit. Only 14 points, nine rebounds, zero blocks, most importantly. Also only two of five from the stripe. Not good. Russell's doing his usual inefficient stuff. Three for 15 from the field. Zero threes, six assists, three steals and a block. Not too bad. Only two turnovers. 
And a lot of people's favorite guy, Karis Levert, had a decent game, 19 points, six boards, six assists, two steals, only one turnover, although it looks like his efficiency is starting to drop a little, only seven for 16 from the field and four of six from the free throw line. Off the bench, Ed Davis grabs rebounds like Ed Davis typically does with 10. He also chipped in 10 points. Rondé Hollis Jefferson had 25 minutes off the bench and ended up with eight points, seven boards, three assists, a block, and one turnover. And Spencer Dinwiddie played 32 minutes off the bench, scored 25. That looks like a season high. Added five threes, pretty atypical, four assists, four boards, no steals or blocks, and two turnovers. And the guy coming back from, oh, I guess he came back last week, but Crab is still there off the bench, 20 minutes, but only one for six shooting. That was a three. He gave you also six boards, two assists, and an atypical block. Three point. Yay, Crab. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm surprised Hollis Jefferson hasn't has got back in the starting rotation yet. Um, do you have any, any thoughts on that, or you think that's or any insight? You're thinking like he'll get bumped for Dudley, or Dudley yeah, will get bumped. I was, thinking, I was thinking Dudley would get bumped, but he played 38 minutes tonight. I know it's overtime game, but I didn't think Dudley could last this long. Um, you have any thoughts on that rotation? I'm I don't know. On it, yeah. Yeah, based off last year, you know, coach was playing them all pretty much like consistently, like 26, 27 minutes a game, like up and down the whole roster. Mm-hmm. But it seems kind of getting more tick, except for Allen, who you know dealing with some foul trouble. And Dudley doesn't usually get that many that many minutes. Now, overall, I'm not that big on Rondé Hollis Jefferson's game. Okay, but that's more of a personal bias than a, a fantasy stat or anything. Yes, yeah, fantasy stat wise, he's pretty decent. I think. I mean, I know his percentages aren't the best, but other category, the popcorn stuff and the steals and blocks, he does decently for for where he goes in the draft normally. Um, but it looks like he might be on the outside looking in in terms of the minutes. At least for now. But he also, I think this is what, like his third game back so far? So No, I think it's like his sixth. Am I wrong? Is it really? Uh, I don't have honest. him in eight teams. Okay. <laughs> I don't have him either. I was just looking at his uh, <laughs> his history. I thought it was his sixth game back. I, I know. It seems like he just got back, but I think he's played six now. So that's why I expect him to be in the starting lineup. But Did you expect also Crab to be starting? I No, I thought Harris is going to start. I think Harris is okay. the guy. Or do you think that's going to flip? Not sure. Only because Crab's making all that money, man. But... Are they going to keep their, you know, their highest paid guy coming off the bench? Yeah, maybe? that's a good point too. But they paid Harris. I guess they didn't pay him that much. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. I think this is these are all going to be kind of like timeshares, though. Like I don't think I think everyone's going to be like kind of bunched together. Um, are you selling Levert? Or are you holding on to him if you have him? I've been trying to, but I guess I can't find the right owners because. <laughs> <Right. laughs> what what, uh, what value are you trying to get back for him? I'm trying to toss him in with another guy, like a, I don't know, like a Chetty Osman or a, a lower guy to try to move up to maybe like a top 40 guy, top 50 guy. Oh, you can't, you can't get that? Wow. Not yet. Not yet. I thought, I thought Levert, what, what is Levert right now? Isn't he around, is he in the top 50 already? He was last week. Let's see. I'm surprised you can't do that. You no, know, the thing is, man. If you play with like, um, even in even in money leagues, Laverse, yeah. ah, he's back down to top seventy. Wah. Oh, okay. But yeah, like if you play in a lot of, uh, I guess with not a lot of pros, there's a lot of newbies in there. Right. Like they tend to look at ADP for value. I know. And that's like almost it. So even if a guy technically has more value, they're like, ah, no. But he was drafted, you know, like twenty spots after my guy. I'm not gonna trade him. Yeah, people so fixate on that that ADP too much, you know, instead of like the, well, it's not a bad thing to at least start off with. But yeah, you shouldn't, anyway, it's tough to trade if someone someone is anchored on that um, 10th round value for Levert or something, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, any other thoughts on this game? Are you are you'd all, um, I, I'm kind of like looking at Jill Harris. Should I think pick him up or what do you think? For just, deeper leagues or for standard leagues? No, for just like I need threes and steals. I don't think he's gonna get any steals though. He shoots so well for a shooting guard. That's what I love about him. Um yeah, shooting fifty one percent this year. Um I just don't think he's gonna get enough enough steals to to make it worth my while. I wish he was a three and D guy. <laughs> he's pretty much just a three guy. <laughs> he's just a three guy. He's a very good guy. He gets three a lot guy. of them though. Yeah, he shoots well and he gets a lot of them, but just no D. Um 
He's at 110 right now, so that that's cusp of standard league value. Yeah, he's right there. Um, How about Dinwiddie? Any thoughts on him? Uh, I like I like him. I just don't. I think he's still second banana to Russell. I guess tonight he outplayed him. Um, I I wish uh, if I knew he was a starting point guard, I would want him. If I knew he could get 32 minutes every night, I would yeah gobble him up. But I don't. I just don't trust him on a night to night basis. What are your thoughts on him? I agree. I would use him in a deep league, but in standard leagues, he's more of a streamer when he's hot guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if Russell got hurt, for sure, I'd pick him up in a heartbeat. Um, yeah. And then Ed Davis, do you think he's going to have any value this year? The usual, like, top 150. I streamed him last week and won rebounds. Just yeah, it, Oh, really? A rebound oh, nice. guy, yeah. Yeah, good for you. I'm still learning how to do head-to-head. So, uh Anyway. We'll change notes. You can you can school me on Roto. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, fourth game: Indiana, New York. Uh, Indiana. Oh wins my one- God! What a crap show this game was. <laughs> Indiana wins one hundred seven, one hundred one uh, on the Indiana side. Uh, Oladipo twenty four six and one, three three pointers, two steals, and a block. Um, not a bad line for expectations, though maybe a little low. Um, Miles Turner, he's been disappointing. Eight points, three rebounds, four assists, two blocks, though. Um, no three pointers. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, 10 points, three rebounds, and a steal. Thaddeus Young had a solid night 13 points, 10 rebounds, assists, five steals. Actually, a great night. Three blocks. <clears throat> um, just saw that. And then Collison, someone I dropped earlier. Eight points, three rebounds, six assists. And a steal um, off the bench. Corey Joseph had 32 minutes, got six points, two rebounds, six assists. And then DeMont, De, I'm going to pronounce the name wrong. DeMont, DeMontis Sabonis, gosh, uh, it's terrible. Uh, 30 points, nine Sounds rebounds. Sounds good. Uh, three assists, thank you. 12 of 12 from the field, my God. Six of seven from the line, two blocks. And then Tyreek Evans, I guess he's just working his way back from injury. Five points, five rebounds, three assists, two of eight shooting. Um, and a steal and a block. Uh, what I'm taking away from this is um, Collison. I don't think I can trust them. I'm I'm not that disappointed. I dropped them. I just thought they'd be better, bigger upside guy players out there. I think Collison's going to be more in that one to one twenty range this year. Um, let's see. <clears throat> and then Demontis Sabonis. I'm not sure what's going to go on there. And Miles Turner. Do you have any thoughts on that that front court? I didn't draft Turner at all because, I mean, I said it from the summer. He's literally like a higher cost Jared Allen. He's like a block specialist yeah. with, you know, a pretty good efficiency, but that's about it. Yeah, I don't know why people still love this guy, um, but he hasn't. Um, I saw him in preseason. He didn't look very good, so I kind of avoid him at that point. Uh, Sabonis, is someone at all? Would you? I guess you would sell high on him, right, if you, if you could, but that's probably – Ask yeah, that'll be much. difficult. Yeah. But I kind of like Sabonis because even in limited minutes, his stat set is a little bit, little bit limited. Yeah. But if you want something like you know popcorn points and boards and usually decent percentages, he can get you those. Not too many blocks or steals though. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for a low minute guy, he does fill it up. Um, any thoughts on the Depot this year? Do you think he's gonna not live up to his hype? Um, a little bit worried about it. I don't think he'll fall too far, but he might not hit the top 12 like he did last year. Yeah, I think he's probably more like a second-round guy. Um, we'll see. Uh, I feel like I'm just like throwing questions at you. Sorry, I probably should have warned no. you I'd do that. <laughs> anyway, oh, um, That's all I'm other... good for, answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm much better at asking than actually answering, so it's, that's my comfort zone. Um, do you want to go to the New York side and take us through it? Yeah, just... Uh... Want to pour a little out for Tyreek Evans? Get well soon, man. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So on the New York side, again, we had uh, Mitchell Robinson, rookie, starting for Ennis Cantor. Uh, Robinson only played 18 minutes. He had he shot zero for three from the field, had four boards and two blocks for zero points. And then off the bench, Cantor played 21 minutes and had six boards, seven points, two assists. Poor shooting, 3 of 11 from the field. So if you add 21 and 18, that only comes out to 39, which means that Vonley got some minutes at his, as a small ball center. And Vonley also started at the power forward spot. 
shot good from the field and the stripe and ended up with 14 points, 10 rebounds, and even more impressively, four assists, two steals, three blocks, and five turnovers, which shows that he was handling the ball some. Also among the starters, Frank Tilekina scored four points, zero threes, two of eight shooting, and added seven assists, one steal. Damian Dotson continues to start and put up low-end numbers. He shot five from 11 for 13 points, including two threes. He had three rebounds, a steal, and one assist. And, of course, Timmy Hardaway Jr., he's a guy doing most of the usage in New York, put up 37 points on almost 50% shooting from the field, perfect 10 out of 10 from the line with seven threes, and that's pretty much it except for his five turnovers. In, in addition to Cantor off the bench, let's see, actually Alonzo Trier, Alonzo Trier with a double L, Alonzo, he was the best performer off the bench in 23 minutes with 14 points, two threes, three boards, an assist, and a block. But he seems like he tends to trade good games with Dotson. And aside from that, Trey Burke did nothing. Mario Hazonia did virtually nothing. And I think that sums it up for New York. Yeah, any takeaways um, from this new starting rotation? Oh, man. Targeting? Do you like Vonley or Dotson? I mean, Vonley was one I thought might do the best tonight. He had a good line. I don't. Obviously, this is not sustainable. But um, would you pick him up in a standard league? I have to say, I'd consider it, even though I really, really, really hate Vonley just based off his past <laughs> experiences. <laughs> oh, I can't I, pay for him. Man. Like you've seen so much of him, just you know, put, being garbage. It's hard to to trust, even in a new situation, that he'll, yeah. he'll be productive. Like especially like two steals and three blocks. Come on. But if he's going to be starting and getting you know minutes at center, I think at least for points and boards, you have to consider. Yeah. Yeah, and then Damian Dotson. I I don't really. I'm just kind of watching him. Are you at all interested in him? He's the other one, I guess. It's kind of interesting. I added him in one league just kind of for you know for chuckles, just to see what's up. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think I'll be keeping him. Yeah, I I don't know if you've seen him play. I wasn't too impressed when I watched him. I think he's pretty raw still. Is um, he? I mean, I, that, I just saw him play one game. Um, it was against the Warriors, so maybe not a good right. good game to watch. But um, <laughs> <laughs> they make everyone look raw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Nilakina, though, he's the one that I want. Unfortunately, I think he I think he's gone in most of my leagues. So do you? You think he uh, can sustain his uh? Well, his starting. I just no, oh, sorry. Um. I mean, if I don't look at the points, well, tonight was a horrible line. Um, I just like watching him play. Maybe from a fantasy perspective, he's not there yet. Have you seen him play okay. much? Last year, not this year. Okay. What do you think of his game? He looked pretty raw to me. He really gets after it defensively, but like everything else, he kind of looks lost. Oh, well, he gets one on one defensively. I don't even I don't even know if he's that that impressive. Like from a team standpoint, okay. Now, of course, on offense, he was a mess last year. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's very raw. So maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just um, hoping. You know, I like the seven well, assists though. I like. I I didn't think he could pass that well. Anyway, go ahead. What was that? I was just gonna say in H two H, like you tend to find that every year there's some guys that are kind of staples of the waiver wire. So like you know they'll be on the wire. Sono Adam, they'll get dropped. They'll get added again. They'll get mm-hmm. dropped. So he seems to be probably like one of those kind of players, like him, Sexton. Uh, Shy Gil, just Alexander. Yeah. Those guys, I think, will be kind of bouncing around. So I bet you if he has, like, another low-scoring game, you could probably pick him up later this week or next week. Yeah, he might get dropped. You're right. And I'll probably end up dropping him myself once I get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, there you go. Yeah. See, you're already, you're already down with the H2A strategy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Any uh, any other thoughts from this or from uh, any other of the games so far in the early slate? Uh, no, I'm good, I think. All right. Um. All right, going on to the late night games. San Antonio one twenty, Phoenix ninety. Uh, the Spurs crushed them on the road. I'll go through the uh, San Antonio side. Marcus Aldridge only played twenty four minutes, twenty four points though, three rebounds and assists, ten of thirteen shooting, four for four from the line, and a block. Um, DeRozan twenty five points, four rebounds, three assists. He shot incredibly well, 10 of 12, 5 of 5 from the free throw line, a steal a block. Rudy Gay, 12 points, 8 rebounds. Um, one, of, one of two from the line and a three-pointer. Um, I think I missed the three-pointers in DeRozan. He had five, and Aldridge had zero. 
Um, Cunningham getting the start at power four, 26 minutes, four points, three rebounds, three assists. Not really worth owning yet, um, if ever. Uh, Bryn Forbes, likewise, 22 minutes. Um, just put up seven points. Did have seven assists, though, a rebound and two steals, but was 0 for 3 from the line. Um, and then the bench, there's a lot of bench activity, I guess. I thought Patty Mills might become relevant when um, they lost. Um, who am I thinking of? Who am I blanking on, Chef? Who, who, the point guard? Yes. What's his, what was his name who went down? The guy, the guy that like we've never seen him play before? No, 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 no. The one before that. Oh, uh, Murray. Yes, DeJounte Murray, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that guy? He was like, I remember one. that guy. <laughs> I don't remember the other guy still. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, DeJounte Murray. Oh, I think it's, um, is it Derek White, the second one? White, yes, yeah. that's his name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Good well, job. DeJounte Murray went down, I thought, uh, Patty Mills, and then surely I thought once um, the backup went down, Patty Mills, but I guess he's just the backup role. Hasn't really um, developed into um, anything more than that, so... Oh, then Palka saw someone. I, I took a chance on the end of my draft and then summarily dropped because he's just not playing that many minutes. Eight points, nine rebounds, four assists tonight. Um, and then Jakob Pertl just kind of Ugh. fell the rotation. Just eight <laughs> minutes. I don't. This guy was. Uh, anyway, I don't know what you thought about him coming into the draft. I thought he might have late round value. Um, clearly. Um, I loved him after the trade, but after seeing the first couple preseason games, I kind of cooled on him. Oh, you watched some of the preseason. You got to see. You just didn't. You just not look like he fit in, or what would you notice? I was just looking at the box scores. And I'm like, man, this guy is like, you know, seems like Pop's kind of yanking him around. So yeah, yeah, fair enough. He never got that many minutes, even though when he was starting. Yeah, which is a horrible sign. Um, I guess my, this is a tough one to take away from because the minutes were so low because it was such a blowout. Um, I guess Demar's been having a great season, and what kind of it's kind of just basically Aldridge to Rosen, and then. Maybe Rudy Gay, um, or definitely Rudy Gay, but sort of mm-hmm. the late round value. But no one really else on this team. Do you see anyone else worth owning in a twelve team league? No, I was streaming Forbes for threes, but outside of that, he's just a deep league guy. Yeah, yeah. Adrian was kind of thinking he might pop, but just hasn't worked out. Um, yeah, not much else in this game. You want to take us through the Phoenix side, which is kind of ugly. Yeah, Phoenix was very ugly. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, except for Trevor Ariza, who's starting. Oh, yeah. Decent. Trevor had a nice night, yeah. Old man Trevor played 30 minutes, only 4 of 11 from the field, but he did hit two threes, 4-4 four four from free throw. He got five rebounds, excuse me, seven rebounds, three assists, two steals, 14 points. TJ Warren drew the start with no booker, and he shot eight for 16 with one three, perfect from the line. So he got 21 points, one block, three assists, three boards. Uh, Jackson had another ugly game, two for seven, with two assists, a block, four points. Aiton also struggled a bit. Uh, he did all right, almost a double-double, 13 points, eight rebounds, but no blocks or defensive stats, and had three turnovers. The guy everybody was looking at, Akobo, the rookie. Uh, kind of <laughs> what I expe- expected when I told people to hold off after just one game. But he shot three for nine, zero threes, two of two from the free throw line, five assists, four boards, one steal, and eight points. But again, um, now off the bench, looks like Miles Bridges actually got some minutes for once, but that's not sustainable. He had 16 points, a three, two steals. Who else? Another rookie, Melton, got 20 minutes, only seven points, a three of 12 shooting, and everyone else is pretty marginable. Yeah, this team is pretty ugly. Um, aside from Aiton and I guess Booker when he comes back, I don't know how else to trust. Um, I guess Ariza at the bottom end of your roster isn't bad. Although he's, I'm looking at his stats for the season. He's only on 15 percent usage, um, only shooting 33 percent so far. Yeah, he's been year. pretty bad. Yeah, he has not been good. Nine points, three assists, four rebounds, and then you know normally he's a steal guy, just a half a steal a game. Mm-hmm. So not really worth, I think. Um, I guess if you have him at the end of your bench, he's not, or at the end of the year lineup, it's not terrible. Um, are you? Um, let's see. Yeah, so I I picked up Josh Jackson at one point, thinking he might be okay, but he's obviously <laughs> not okay. <laughs> yeah, not okay. Um, 
Okobo, do you think he might supplant uh, Isaiah here for the short term? Or do you think he's worth it all a streamer ad? I mean, yeah, you could stream until Booker comes back. And even after Booker gets back, he might stick as a starter. Yeah. But, you know, he won't be putting up numbers like his last game. I think this is more of kind of his baseline probably. Yeah, I agree. I haven't uh, seen him play. I've heard he looks pretty good. Um, but um, I, he's he's, he's going to get taken over by Booker. Booker's just going to dominate the ball. So you probably won't get yeah. too many assists or too many points from him. Agreed. Uh, yeah. And then between Warren and Aiton and, um, and Booker, there would be very low to go around. Warren's another guy on the, you know, as a kind of end of the bench guy that you could keep. He's been playing well. Yeah. And especially if he can continue hitting his threes, I think definitely he has like top 100, 120 ish. Yeah. I like to see him get, I mean, I think he's basically taken in all my leagues. Um, yeah. He's probably not on the white waivers, but yeah, he might get if he is. If Booker comes back and he, he kind of goes to the bench a little bit. Um, any other thoughts on this, uh, this game? No, uh, pretty crappy. I guess we could go to. Oh shoot, the games aren't over yet. <laughs> the other two, um, <laughs> two point one seconds left in a tie game. I know. Shoot. I, Actually, the game probably is over. We're just getting like a late score feed up. Oh, we got Lakers. Oh, well, it looks like Golden State New Orleans is about to finish up. Yeah, that's exactly. not going to you. Yes, let's do that one. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, the stats are, we might be off by a little bit. There's 28 seconds left in the game. Golden State at this point is up 129 to 19. Um, I got 129, 121, 18 seconds left. We're good. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 129, 121. Let's just, let's just talk for like a second. And then we'll okay. Back. I'm, I'm gonna... <laughs> All right, the games have now ended. Um, where do you want to start? Do you have a preference? Uh, no. All right. We'll go to Dallas, LA. Cool. Uh, I'll do it. Dallas goes down one fourteen, one thirteen. At one point, this was a blowout, but they came storming back. Um, let's check out Luka Doncic. Uh, twenty eight points. Excuse me, twenty eight minutes. Fourteen points, five rebounds, seven assists, three three pointers, a steal, having just a very solid to great rookie year. DeAndre Jordan, ten points, twelve rebounds, um, four of four shooting, two of two from the line, a steal and a block. Um, let's see who else. Dennis Smith Jr. struggled tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this guy, two of nine shooting, just five points, uh, a rebound, three assists, a steal. Harrison bon- Barnes, excuse me, 19 points, four rebounds, uh, four three pointers and a block. Um, and then Wesley Matthews, 21 points, one rebound, one assist, four three pointers, two steals off the bench. Um, Dorian Finney-Smith played 25 minutes, put up 19 points and three rebounds. That's about it, though. And then J.J. Barea, he's put up a lot of assists for off the bench. Tonight he put up 10, 15 points. Someone, if you need to stream assist, that's your guy. Um, that's really it from the Dallas side. I'm sorry, my here I go. Um, not sure what to take away about this. I'm not really big on Wesley Matthews. I mean, I know he... You can stream him for points and maybe steals, but um, doesn't do anything else. And I'm worried about his steals because of his age, so I'm not really streaming him. Um, the threes. Oh, three. That's sorry. So yes, yes, yes. You're right. Threes. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, points, threes, and steals. And then um, that's really it. Nothing more to take away from this line. Maybe I think Harrison J- Barnes would be a better streamer if he's out there. He might be gone though. That's a pretty shallow thing, I think. I haven't seen him in any of my 12 teams. Oh, you haven't? Okay. No. I think he's in at least one of mine still out there. Um, Ooh. You, what, would you recommend him over Matthews? What do you think? I like him. Yeah, definitely more than Matthews. I like him overall better as a Roto guy, though. Yeah. But yeah, definitely over Matthews. Yeah. Matthews, uh, I think, is like around 150. So that's, that's deep league territory. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Or um, stream if you need threes. Yeah, I wonder if he is out there. Anyway, uh, I should probably just uh, I'll turn it over to you. Any thoughts on this uh on this line? Um, no, not from the map side except for Barea with the double double. He's been kind of inconsistent, but yeah, you could probably still stream him for assists until he gets hurt. Yeah, and, he's Go ahead. Yeah, and uh just yeah, now that uh you know kind of Barnes is back, everything's kind of settling in. Yeah, you're right. Barea's only shooting 28% this year. Um, <laughs> which is but six assists the game, so that's pretty. That's pretty sweet. All right, uh, you want to take us through the winning side? Sure. And if you have Dennis Smith, ah, uh, 
he should have sold high. Wait till he gets another couple games. Get rid of him. Yeah, he's much bigger name than he is at fantasy value, unfortunately. Definitely. So uh, for the Lakers side, LeBron James hit the game-winning free throw and also scored 29 points off 11 of 19 shooting with two threes, five boards, six dimes, and three steals. Brandon Egram returned, or I guess he's been back for a couple of games. He has 17 points off a poor six for 16 shooting. Yeah, pretty also poor from the line, four for six. And middling in the middle with three boards, one assist, one steal, three turnovers. Kuzma stuck as a starter still, 7-11 from the field with 18 points, only one three, eight boards, three assists, one block. JaVale McGee continues to do it and had a double-double with 16 points, 15 boards, added five blocks, two steals. And Lonzo had 12 points, seven assists, four boards, three for three from three, and actually shot it pretty well from the field, four for six. Disappointing off the bench was Hart, who only scored three points with one three, one steal, and called Will Pope also off the bench, nine points for two for five, zero threes, two steals. And Rondo finally, to cap it off, two of seven from the field, one three, two steals, three dimes, five points. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, I dropped Rondo a couple days ago. I don't think I made a mistake. I don't um, think so. Yeah. And what about Hart, though? This is surprising, or do you think it's just an anomaly? Very disappointing. I think I think Walton's still trying to figure out what he wants to do, you know, with Rondo coming back and also Ingram coming back. But I think just his skill set is too too needed for that squad. So I'm still holding him in the one team that I have. Okay, yeah. I don't think he'll get dropped. I don't think anyone's going to drop him. But, yeah, if you have him, I think hold tight. I um, mean, you'd rather have him than Harrison Barnes, right? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I was mean, thinking too. Go ahead. Yeah, the threes and the steals, too good for H2H. Yeah. Um, and then Kuzma, he's – he's. I didn't think he would fit – people say he fits well next to LeBron. I, I, I had a different take, but it looks like it's just fine tonight um, and has been. Any other thoughts on this game? No, that's about it. I think, yeah, you want to hang in there with Hart, of course. You want to hang on to Lonzo and everything else. Looks pretty much about all right. Yeah. All right. Last game of the evening, Golden State 131, New Orleans 121. Maybe a Western Conference Finals preview. What do you think? Possible? It's definitely possible. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't Davis is going to be Houston, right? <laughs> like Not Bucky. so far. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Very unexpected. <laughs> I know. Uh, on the that'd be sweet because the Pelicans, sorry, the Pelicans actually play Golden State well, like traditionally. So that'd be a sweet matchup if we get to see that. Yeah, they they don't do well against the good big. But although they have Boogie now, so that might well he doesn't really defend. But we'll see how this 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 works out. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. I would love to see someone knock them off, and I think New Orleans might have the best chance. Um, Me too, man. Yeah. So speaking of bigs, Anthony Davis made it back tonight. Forty-one minutes, seventeen points, twelve rebounds, seven assists. Uh, only went six or sixteen from the field. Um, and then one three pointer and just a block. Um, Drew Holiday led the scoring with twenty eight points, three rebounds, nine assists, eight of eleven from the line, two three pointers, two steals. Miritich had twenty six points, six rebounds. Excuse me, twelve rebounds, one assist, two three pointers, two steals, uh, turnover. And then Etwan Moore, uh, 21 points, four rebounds, another streaming candidate, two steals, three three-pointers. Um, Tim Frazier got the start with the injured. Alfred Payton, 21 minutes, though. Um, just 21 minutes, eight points, one rebound, one assist. Um, clearly not uh, ball dominant tonight. And then off the bench, Randall had 11 points, 10 rebounds, two assists, and had a solid night from the line, five of six. Not really um, anyone else on the bench to really talk about. I thought Tim Frazier might be worth streaming in a deeper league. I guess that's not even the case. Um, it's it, They basically have the big three here, right? Holiday, Davis, and Miritich. And mm-hmm. then maybe Etwan more if you need to stream. I mean... I'd take Randall over Etwan. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Randall. I, I totally forgot about him. Yes, Ran- Randall is definitely valuable to own. And then maybe stream Etwan, right? Or do you think he's um, worth owning a 12-team? 
man, he's kind of right at the border. So I guess if you have a stacked squad, you just need a guy to kind of, you know, hold it down and not mess with your percentages. He's all right. But aside from that, he doesn't really do enough with like the steals or the threes on most nights to be a streamer. To me, it's just more of a better for like a 14 team league. Personally. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I think he's out there in most of my 12 team leagues. Um, yeah, not much else to take away from this. It was um, a high scoring affair. Um, you want to take us over the Golden State side, or do you have any thoughts on uh, New Orleans? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it kind of sucks that there's only four guys you can use out of their whole team, but yeah, I know for such a high scoring team, you would think maybe another guy would be valuable. But anyway, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of the same thing for the next team, the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> exactly, <It's a> same, <laughs> as we'll see right now. Same thing, right? So Steph was a leading score with 37, and once again, he's trying to put another MVP trophy on his shelf. He shot 12 for 20, seven more threes. It looks like he'll break the record again that he set this year. Um, what else? Nine assists, two steals, five turnovers. Eh, you get that sometimes. Next up was KD with 10 for 17 from the field. Still not shooting very many threes, which is disappointing. Only two for three. But aside from that, he does KD stuff, 24 points, eight assists, five rebounds, two steals, no blocks tonight. Draymond Green had a double-double, almost triple-doubled with 16 points, including two threes, 14 boards, eight dimes, a block, two turnovers, and he also got took a knee to the groin, I believe. But he's been playing better, so that's good. And finally, the hot guy from last game, Clay Thompson, had 18 points on 7 of 17 shooting with one three. An abnormal three of five from the line, four assists, one steal, three turnovers. Off the bench, Jarebko got hot, hit two threes for 10 points, two steals and a block. And aside from that, there wasn't much else um, in terms of, yeah, guys you want in standard leagues. Yeah, there's not much here to to take away. I mean, either you own these guys or you don't, right? Um, mm -hmm. Damian Jones, I thought at one point might be worth a speculative ad. Clearly hasn't worked out. Kevon Looney is probably the... I guess if you had to pick one to speculate, I'd go on him. I agree. Between him and Bell and, and, and Damian Jones. Um, I think Steph Curry's going to finish in the top three this year in, uh, in fantasy, uh, barring injury. And... Um, it's nice to see Draymond Green getting points. 16 points, 15 rebounds. Definitely. Huge night. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts from you? No, well, yeah, those are the four guys. And they're, you know, Clay and Draymond are back to playing well. Steph started out hot. He's still hot. And, yeah, Steph looks real good. I'm mad I only have one share of Steph in all the fantasy land. Yeah, I mean, definitely not a sell high guy, right? You wouldn't want to sell him. You just hold him, wouldn't you? Or would you, would you think about selling him? I mean, when you talk about sell high, you're trying to, like, you know, beat value. So what are you going right. to sell him for? You, know, you can sell for the, for, for Anthony you, Davis? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah. yeah, Anthony Davis or Harden. Would you take Harden over him or you take Curry at this point? As bad as Houston is looking, I'd probably take Curry. And Harden's also banged up on one of my squads. I teams. know. I think Curry is probably the second number two in fantasy right now. Yeah. Like, he's a beast. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, all right. You made it through the, your whole first show. What do you think, man? I thought it was real smooth, man. I appreciate you <laughs> making it so easy for me. Oh, of course. Of course. Thanks for answering all my questions. I feel like you answered. How many posts did you answer on the uh, form about team? Uh, I don't know, man. Like 200,000. <laughs> <laughs> There's like 200 plus. That's crazy. That is so awesome. You did that. Um, anyway, uh, let's get your Twitter handle out there. What is it again? Can you say it? I forget it. At floppy underscore divots. Floppy underscore divots. Yes. So F L O P P Y underscore D I V A C. That correct? is correct, sir. Yes. And I am at ball with Neil N E I L. Hit us up with any questions, um, any thoughts uh, from fantasy basketball. I'm on there all the time. Happy to answer your questions. I know Chef is as well. Thanks so much for joining me, Chef. And i um, like to have you back on another time. Thanks again, man, for sure. All right. Good night, everyone. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.